This video introduces more formal methods for finding an MCAS when there is a tracking problem. So the previous video explained the need to put limits on the allowable target to ensure that the steady state was feasible. And what we're going to do now is include the targets and disturbances into our admissible set algorithm given we know what these limits might be. We're going to use absolute variables for prediction rather than deviation variables, but otherwise what we're going to do is pretty much the same as in videos 9 and 10. So first then, just to remind you of the previous video, which said the targets, or if you like the signal R minus D, have got to lie between an upper limit and a lower limit which satisfy these constraints, because if not, the targets are not reachable and our problem is not properly defined. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you define an appropriate lower limit for RD and upper limit for RD. What about prediction? Well, first of all, we know how the steady state depend upon R minus D. We can substitute that into our system predictions and we get prediction equations a bit like this, which we've used in the previous few videos. But what's new, we also need to have a prediction for how this signal R minus D changes. So what we're going to do is assume that within the prediction it's fixed. Obviously when you move to an example you can modify this, but within the prediction we're going to assume it's constant. If I put that all together, I can now form an autonomous model with an augmented state ZK, where this state includes my X, my degrees of freedom C, and my R minus D term. Now, if you look at this augmented model, what you'll notice is the top row basically tells you how XK um, goes forward, which is the main prediction equation. The middle block here tells you about your degrees of freedom C future and this block in the bottom right tells you that R minus D essentially stays constant. I can also write my input in terms of this augmented state which is done down here. But the key thing is I've now got an autonomous model which tells me how my augmented state evolves. What about constraints? So we've got limits on U, limits on X and limits on this term R minus D. So I can also combine these into a single set of inequalities. So I can define, you can see this matrix G down here, where the top two blocks are basically the input limits. The next block is the state limits. And the block at the bottom is the limits on R minus D. Now what you'll notice is I've actually split this system into a G1 and a G2, and we're going to show you why now. Because we assume that the value R minus D is constant, so in essence we had this um, rule here, then these particular rows should not be carried forward in any admissible set iteration, because R minus D is not going to tend to zero, it's going to stay at the same value, and that will affect the admissible set algorithm if it's not handled correctly. So that's why we've split this G into G1 and G2, and you'll notice we insist that the G1 ZK less than or equal to F1 for all values of K, that one's going to iterate forward, however, g2 zk less than or equal to f2, we only need to do it at k equals naught because that part of z or those constraints are not going to change as we iterate forward. So there is this subtle change in how we handle the constraints and we need to think about that when we write our admissible set algorithm. So a summary. We've got a stable autonomous model for predictions. There it is. Zk plus 1 equals psi Zk. We've got constraints which are split into two components, one which must be satisfied for all k and one which must be satisfied just at k equals naught. Uh, the asymptotic point is in the interior, so we can now use a pretty standard admissible set algorithm to determine the MCAS for this system. And we've reminded you the G2 constraints do not change, so we do not include them in the iteration within the admissible set algorithm. So simple code for you is in this file here, find MAS underscore tracking. And the reason it's got a different name is this file allows for this split 
in the inequalities between ones that must be satisfied at all k and ones that must only be satisfied at the first sample. Now just a reminder, once you've found the MCAS in the form fzk less than or equal to t, you can of course recognise that f could be split into an m, an n and a v, where m multiplies on x, n on c and v on r minus d. And so we could write our admissible set in what might be considered a more useful form like this, n c future plus mx plus v into r minus d less than or equal to t. And that's often convenient. The other thing you might want to be reminded of is that the shape of the MCAS clearly depends upon what values you put in for R minus D. And strategies like reference governors exploit this observation in order to ensure feasibility. So now a warning before we carry on. The code that we've put in findmastracking.m is simple and transparent but it is not efficient by any means. So if you've got a slow system or large numbers of states and so on, then this code will not work particularly well. Okay, so we'll look at more efficient code in the next video. This code, the find MAS tracking is provided as a simple code so you can see what's going on, but probably not something to use in the long term. Let's have a quick look then at the code that we've got. So we've done Two examples for you, video 513 example 1 and video 513 example 2. So if we just have a quick look at MATLAB, then you can see here's video 513 example 1. So if we run this one, so you can see it runs reasonably quickly because this is a simple example. You're going to get two figures out and what you can see is that it handles the time varying nature of R minus D. There's a set point change here and there's disturbance here and everything works fine. I'm not going to run the second one because as you will see example 2 is very very slow and that's because of the inefficiency in this file here. So that's a reminder of the pictures that you got from example one. So they're just there to demonstrate the code does indeed work. It does indeed find the MCAS and everything is fine. If you were to run example two, what you'll find is it's very slow to converge and it ends up with 1644 inequalities, which is a huge number of inequalities given the problem. <coughs> Now, the very large number of rows is likely linked to the fact that we've given so much freedom in how you can choose R and D. So, in summary, this video has shown how a single MCAS can be constructed for the OMPC OSMPC album for time varying targets and disturbance, and that's the key thing. I've used an admissible set algorithm even though. I've got time varying targets and disturbances. And the way we've done this is we've essentially used an augmented state which includes the target or this R minus D term as an additional state in our autonomous model. However, in order for the code to work, the target must be reachable or feasible during transients and in steady state with a given choice of NC. The code is not efficient and convergence is poor and indeed it can fail altogether if R minus D is chosen poorly. Now ensuring feasibility is beyond the remit of this chapter but what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to look at how you can make the code more efficient so that it now becomes something you really can work with.